Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 343. Uh, each week we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have Richard Hearn. Uh, Richard uh, is um, an SEO, he's proud to call himself an SEO. He's uh, he deals mainly in uh, upper echelon uh, websites, newspapers, and so on. Um, he's based in Thailand, um, sometimes in Ireland. Um, you can find Richard at um, redcardinal.ie. All right, Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim is CEO of onlineownership.com. Uh, he's... Um, a Google product expert uh, in the uh, Google My Business community. Um, and um, Tim uh, is based in Corby, about 100 miles uh, north of London. Uh, he uh, um, can be found at onlineownership.com. William Rock uh, is uh, based in Kansas, USA. Uh, William uh, um, can be found at, at williamrock.com. He's also a product expert in the webmaster community. Um, Masataki Wasser is webmaster of wasserweb.net. Uh, he's based in Wimbledon in London. Um, he uh, uh, can be found at wasserweb.net, W A S A W E. B.net. He's also a um, Google product expert on the AdSense community. I think I've covered everybody. We have six questions only today. Uh, uh, our first question uh, is titled um, A competitor still ranks higher. It's from Katerina Lujak. Um, and Katerina said, Hi, guys. Again, I need a bit of help. Um, welcome back. Um, competitor back uh, competitor backlink audit didn't reveal anything extraordinarily good in terms of quality links. Also, they have less text and an overall slow page, but still are ranked higher. What am I missing here except uh, Facebook devilish mentions? Um, P.S. Efforts in creating new backlinks are in place. Don't fight over this one. I have a bad answer. It's not really related to this, but it just, <coughs> excuse me, it re I recall a, an old saying about what spam st stood for, and it was sites placed above mine. <laughs> it's a tricky one, this. You can't, really do, you can't really say that, you know, the content or the speed of a site loading, or even in some cases, the backlinks of a site are what are determining why one side is outranking another. Um, the bad news on this is that you could ask 100 SEOs the same question, you'll probably get 100, 100 different answers. So without looking at the sites and what the queries are, etc., it's very hard for anyone to give any sort of answer to this. Yeah, fair enough, uh, Richard. Just my opinion, I don't know. I think you're on the I mean, basically, it's just a matter of, you know, you're right, 100 people are going to say 100 different things, but at the same time is, you know, I wouldn't really focus on the links. Let's look at the content, look at the topics versus keywords, and looking at that relevancy to, to, to be able to topple over a competitor and be above the spam. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's true. You can control content. I mean, definitely, they, they should look at the content and look at it from a content perspective. And you know, is the content on their content on their site, the content on the competitor site, is it meeting the expectations of users? Like, are, are they, you know, whatever the user intent is in, in terms of what the what the site is about? 
you know, are they are they publishing content that is actually helping users or not? So definitely, yeah, have a look at your content and, and how it's helping users and look for gaps there and try and build better content. I know everyone says that, but that, that is actually a reality. And yeah, maybe don't focus too much on the backlinks. Get get the stuff on site right first. And then maybe, you know, you can look at the backlinks. But you know, creating new backlinks, be very wary of of any sort of link building because quite a lot, a lot of those links are probably not going to do you any good. Yep, that's fair enough too. I see. How's, how's Dan Petrovic going? Yeah, I, I, that's very interesting to watch. I, you know, do you know what the, the 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 sort of terrible thing about his experiment is? It it won't really be valid because he's going to be exceptional in terms of what he's been able to do. Like it's a great experiment. Like it's not that it's invalid, but what he's able to do because of his position and the fact that everyone knows who he is, etc. He's able to get people to change their links. You know, people will change their links for him. So he, like, he's exceptional. You know, he's atypical. So it'll be a great experiment. It'll be really interesting to see what what the outcome is. But unfortunately, most people would never be able to replicate what he is doing. And that's where it sort of falls down a little bit. Like I say, you know, exceptional experiment. It'll be fascinating to see what happens. Um, you know, poor Al Dan is like, you know, you know, Jim also, like the history, like he's had a lot of history with Google, you know, in general. And, you know, you can't help but feel for him. Um, we'll have to just wait and see what happens. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, you actually, guys... it just just reminded me of saying that I've got to I've got to sniff out some some links that I, I I've added and uh, changed them over the years. Did, 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 did I mean I don't know if everyone like everyone knows the background like you know Dejan SEO but. I don't know if anyone looked at the the link detoxification from from Semper, you know? Yeah, that was it was yeah. Like okay, you know the tool looks looks really good, you know, I have to admit like it, it looks like a very well thought out tool. It looks like it's really well integrated, but you know, I couldn't help but sit there and look at some of the stuff that he was looking at and you know, I just you know, no matter how good a tool is, it's sort of you, you're always going to be held by the old adage that rubbish in and rubbish out and i couldn't help but think that like some of the stuff that he was sort of highlighting and saying you know this stuff can cause you damage and it can it can stick around in google i mean there's no way of knowing really what sticks around even though okay he says that somebody from google had told him off record that some of this stuff doesn't get cleared out but you know some of the stuff he was looking at like i couldn't help but think you know dan is just one of thousands or tens of thousands of sites that is linked to from, you know, these these spam websites. And I just, you know, I, I couldn't help but think that they were just sort of wasting their time looking at stuff like that, because if that was the cause of what happened to Dan, you know, in my opinion, it should therefore be plausible that it's happening to other people also. And I just, don't, I don't buy that. Did you see that other one that popped up? I think it was Jenny Halas found a whole load of uh, dodgy Dijan domains which have been created, or including Dijan, which were all being redirected. I hadn't seen that. To the main site. I, I think it was, uh, I don't know, a day or two ago. Well, here's the other thing, okay? The other the other unfortunate thing about his little, his, his experiment is that because he's high profile, you can be sure that there's somebody in Google who's now looking into this to see could there have been a, a human error. Yeah, yeah. Like it, exactly. it's it, it would be. I I think it would be. Now I'm not suggesting there was any error in it, but it would be unimaginable to think that Google, somebody on a team in Google, hasn't didn't ping somebody else and go. By the way, could there have been any problem here? Because like it's high profile, and when people start yeah. talking about stuff, they tend to look into it. Yeah. But one of the problems with them sort of moving very quickly in terms of, you know, migrating to a new site is that if it was a problem, it could get fixed and it could get fixed on the quiet. 
because they might want to not might not want to draw attention to something. But now he's gone and redirected a lot of stuff, or he's you know, <laughs> trying to change his links. So yeah, it's very hard to know what will happen. I mean, he's in a horrible position, and I know. I'd say on a, on a, at a personal level, like he takes that very personally, you know, like, I mean, I couldn't give a fiddler's, I, I barely have a website, so I don't care about my online presence, I haven't done for years, but I know that he has always taken great care to be looking at his online presence <laughs> and his backlink profile, and, and nothing wrong with that, he's dead right to do it, like I'm in the wrong by not caring, but I know he, he takes it personally as well, so I, I, I have to say, I do feel for him and I do wish him all the best with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to see what's going on. He'll he'll let everybody know. That's the great thing actually about him. He's he's very yeah. open. So that's that's one really good thing about it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. We're just about to lose you, uh, William. I can stick around for a little bit longer. Well, yeah. yeah. If you don't stay, we're going to take away platinum. What's uh, that? I said, if you don't stay, we're going to remove platinum. Oh, man. You can't have that. Yeah. Nah, I, was right. checking, I was having no other meetings pulled up. So I'm good. I hope um, that um, is useful for Katerina. Um, Alan Witten has a question. It's titled, I have a poorly performing focus page. Uh, Alan said, hi, everyone. A super dumb question. Sorry in advance. I have a poorly performing um, focus page that I need to do better. It has a poorly named URL that doesn't reflect my primary keyword for the page. This page name is years old now. Well, will have heard my rankings. Um, uh, which are pretty non-existent, or improve it to match um, the uh, keyword phrase. Um, I want to change it from slash personal dash coaching slash to slash life hyphen coach hyphen in hyphen London. I can see and I, I can see the votes uh, up on the screen in front of me. They, they just, they're all shaking their head, uh, Alan. Anyway, let's um, um, throw it open to the panel. You know, there's a golden rule in SEO. I think it should always be never change your URL unless you've got a very, very good justification for doing it. And this is not a good justification. It's it's. I, I can understand why he's trying to do it, but you have to remember that everyone controls their own earls. So everyone could change their earl to life hyphen coach hyphen in hyphen London, and then it would just there'd be no there'd be no benefit. So Google isn't going to take much notice of what's in your earl. They're going to take far more notice of what's in your page. So go and fix your page, but don't worry about changing your earl. If you do change your earl, make sure you redirect. But you know, you're probably going to get so little benefit that actually it's it's just not worth it because any sort of URL change is always risky. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree on that. And, and when he's talking about poorly performing focus page, when, when it comes to a poorly, what does that mean? Is it basically the traffic is not actually converting uh, or they're actually not you know, engaging throughout the rest of the site from that page? And how... how visually how you can to, to capture the audience again i think visitor experience is going to be key the changing the url is going to be more of a headache anyways um and i don't think adding the word london in there is going to be such a benefit but if you have your address and your footer i mean if you have a location that you're actually doing coaching on and you want to actually show up for uh those type of terms for london or even in the city of, the, of london talk about it um have that have that as, as some of the content that you're focusing on, especially for what uh, you know, coaching. So, okay, let's um, move on to the next 
Question three on our run list from Ben Williams. It's titled Pages with no meta description and title. Ben said, uh, after doing a site audit on my client's website, I found out that 100 pages do not have um, a meta description or site title, while some of the pages have got duplicate content as well. The agreement I have with my client is to rank 25 pages, which are 25 keywords. If I fix these 25 pages and try to rank them, I would like to know, will the 100 pages without a site uh, title um, and page description, duplicate meta description, affect my work and won't let the 25 pages uh, be ranked? All the comments go off on one about guaranteeing rankings. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a tricky one. 25 keywords, I mean, that, and then 100 pages. I'd, I'd, I'd look at your analytics first and see. If, you got, if you're only promising 25 pages in those keywords, look at my your analytics and look at what looks to be the, you know, converting all elements and see if you can improve those pages. But like, like you said there, uh, basically the comments – Kind of go at the whole don't promise ranking for keywords. Yeah, he should definitely. One thing, the first thing I would do is look at the duplicate content and see are there pages that could be amalgamated. Like, could you could you trim this down from 100 pages to 25 pages because there's either sure. duplicate content or some of the content is overlapping. And like that's the first thing is to look at the duplicate content. And then he asks about the meta descriptions and the titles. Well. Meta descriptions are really only going to be used for click through, which is because they're in the snippet of the SERP. Page titles are going to have value. So you should definitely, I mean, it's well worth looking at the 100 pages, make sure there's titles on them all and, and unique titles, unique descriptions, and they're targeted. Then look at the 100 pages and see, you know, what are they targeting? Could some of them be combined, you know, especially with that duplicate content? And then make sure they're all interlinked, you know, make sure they're cross linking to each other where it's appropriate. And then look at the architecture of the site. Get the site trimmed up, like get it nice and clean, and then he can work on either adding more content or uh, you know link building, whatever it is. You know, with that type of thing, with twenty five pages to rank, the other thing he could do is he could try to target featured snippets, because if he gets twenty five fe twenty five featured snippets, that's his contract fulfilled, and featured snippets can be got without getting like top rankings. So. That'd be what that'd be my sneaky way to go about it, regardless of uh, my thoughts on his uh, guaranteed rankings. Well, guaranteed rankings, you need an exit strategy. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, everyone starts somewhere. I mean, he's probably sort of starting off on SEO. I, I'm guessing, and what what the hell, you know? He takes on a challenge, and he'll learn from it. Like he'll, he'll either succeed or he won't succeed, and he'll learn either way. So, I mean. Sometimes it's better not to knock someone for, for, for taking on something. He's not going to do any harm to anybody. He could do some harm to the client, but let's assume that he's got at least enough wherewithal that he's, you know, he's, uh, he's more knowledge and professionalism than, than plenty of the people who are just sending spam emails constantly about SEO services. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, you're a good man, Richard. Okay. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know whether this is something that he suggested the client or the, what maybe if that's the what client came with um in the sense that it seems to be a wrong approach to take you know because of reading on 25 pages rather than seeing the site as a whole and seeing you know where are the places to improve where what are things that can be done so they're, they're taking a more holistic view and see realistically speaking where the best scope, the easiest scope for improvements are. So, yeah, you know, I think it's it's going to be a might be a, a tough learning curve. Thank you, Mr. Taki. All right, before we move on, I must point out um, the the contribution that we received from uh, uh, people uh, like Michael Martinez. I see he answered this one. Uh, people who pop up through the week and answer answer questions uh, on our um, dumb SEO questions uh, Facebook community, and I know our panelists uh, often uh, pop in there too. I know Richard Hearn has been 
I still worked um, uh, recently. Um, and yeah, it's it's gratefully received and uh, uh, it should be acknowledged. All right, let's look at number four in our run list. It's from Eric Alves. It's titled Mobile Search Engine Results Page versus Desktop Search Engine Results Page. Um, the question here is that we've got a partner who rebranded about six months be back. Um, on desktop, the search engine results page shows the new page title. But on mobile, the search engine results page shows the old title. All references to the old brand have been removed from the HTML. Um, is mobile service a case version of the site or what? Um, any ideas on what could be causing this? It, after six months, you have to assume that somewhere, somehow, he is serving those old titles. There, there's just no way that Google is still using something from six months ago in the SERPs. Like that, just if they couldn't get, if they can't get to that page anymore, there's no way they'll still serve it in the SERPs. It's just there's no possible way unless it still exists, as in it's still live somewhere. And that's what I, I mentioned in those things about what is he looking for. Um, my guess is that they probably don't realize, but they're probably doing something like serving, uh, you know, it might only be to Googlebot, but they're serving probably this old site is probably still live and someone is probably able to get it. Um, so that would be my guess. And I mentioned a few things there. Yeah, I, I think you're spot on there, Richard. Anybody else? Okay, number five is Catherine Mueller. I wonder if it's John's uh, a relation, a relative of John's. Um, question five um, on our run list is titled The Second Page of a Search Engine Results Page. Um, has anyone found recent data about which, uh, about the percentage of searches who ever get to the second page of search engine results pages? All I can find is a big study uh, from 2013 by Chittica and a very small survey, 1,400 people this year by Moz. Uh, every other source I can find that says something like 90% of searchers never leave the uh, first page of results is linking to old studies. Thanks in advance. I wouldn't be trusting somebody else's study uh, when it's so easy to do one yourself. Um, um, what's the the, um, the service, the egg? Um, um, Crazy egg. egg. Crazy egg, is it? I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm not quite sure which one you're... you're... Well, it, it's, like, it's like a heat map of where people go. Yeah, but you'd have to have that on Google's site to figure out if they were going to page two. Oh, of course, of course. I'm not going to let you install Crazy Egg on their website. It would be nice, maybe, but, but I don't think they're going to let you. Um, you know what? I think actually, like in the answers, like Michael Martinez, he again gives a great answer just saying about the studies that, you know, any study, it's using a limited data set. And, you know, another one of the answers here was also talking about this, this study that from Backlinko that was done just in the last few days. And, you know, the one thing about this study that I only read about, I think, yesterday that stood out to me was it says in the beginning they had access to a limited number of sites, Google Search Console data. It was a handful of sites. So this big, huge, like, it's a great study. Don't get me wrong. Like, it is very interesting and it's got some, you know, great, great ideas in it and some, you know, some of the facts they've teased out are really good. But... We're talking about the data from a limited number of, like a handful of sites. So, you know, you can hardly uh, translate that to what the actual rates are for everybody. And I mean, the study also, it made no reference to, you know, do these SERPs have got, have they got featured snippets or have they got other search features that could affect the click through rates? So, I mean, I think there's just a whole bunch of caveats that, that you can apply to any of these studies these time, these days. But that said, I think you're like some of those figures that are bandied around. It probably is 
90% of people never get to page two. I would say it's probably around that. You can assume it's probably something like that. It's probably even higher. It depends on the SERP. There will probably be some queries where people will go go deeper, but in general, I would say, you know, just take a rule of thumb, 90% of people will never go to page two. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and that was a good answer from Michael Martinez. All right, let's go to our last question uh, on our run list, uh, number six. Uh, do I need a new it's a new Google Search Console account um, for HTTPS? Um, it's from JL Favario. He goes on to ask for a transitioned HTTP website to HTTPS. Uh, do I need to create a new Google Search Console account? Or can I update the current Google Search Console account? Uh, you use the same Search Console account. You just add the new the new property. Yeah, and uh, also it, it, it's a good idea rather than replace the existing uh, property um, it, it, to keep uh, at least for a little while the, the HTTP version so that um, you can um, just see that, that all the traffic is, is, is moving across to the new version and to the HTTPS protocol. Terribly afraid I'll get, get this wrong. All right, anybody else? Uh, yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, you're right there, Jim. You you keep <laughs> you keep the H double T P for a while. I mean, there's you, you can keep it forever, but um, you should keep it for a while because you know you generally see. You know, on the old one, you'll see the graph declining. On the new one, as it, it'll, you should see that increasing. It's also good for just troubleshooting any other little issues, you know, any 404s that or pages that it's still finding and not finding. Uh, another one to remember is, um, you know, you can eventually take your um, sitemaps out of the old one. Yeah, but, it, you know, it's you, you can eventually delete it, but it's good to keep it... Um, I've kept them indefinitely, but you can keep it for at least a year um, just to keep an eye on things. It's, uh, yeah, it's always good to do. Okay. Let's, um, oh, right. It's, it's, it's thank you for watching time. Uh, did, did you, someone want to add uh, something to the previous question? Before no, we no. no, no. Okay, so we've done it again, guys. We've answered all of the questions asked in the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, we'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. But first, I must thank uh, people like Michael Strigger, um, Michael Martinez, the people that answer questions on our Facebook group uh, throughout the week um and, and make it such a valuable um, destination um, your contributions are gratefully received um our panelists tonight tim kappa uh, masataki wasa richard hearn and uh, sometimes we'll see micah fisher kirshner i don't know why we haven't today um and william uh, william rock um, uh, from kansas has popped in we thank you very much. Um, your uh, contributions are valuable. All right, let's um, close this off. Um, th th thank you. We will be back at the same time next week uh, to do this um, all again. Um, but